Okay, hi. Uh, welcome back. Yes. Uh, any one of you uh, in the real estate related industries? No, zero. One. Okay, all right. Uh, so I suppose everyone is in technology? Yeah, okay, right. Okay. So, so today I will speak with you from an uh, insider perspective, from a real estate insider perspective. Huh? Okay, now a uh, little bit of my background. I've been a real estate lawyer for many, many years wrote a book, and I was advisor for a number of property developers in Malaysia. And three years ago, I realized that my industry is going to be disrupted by tech and AI. So that's when I took the leap of faith and founded a company called Leap Pro System Brahat, and I went into a property technology ecosystem. And in 2016, how I came across blockchain was uh, in October 2016, at the time, I was in London attending the Legal Gate conference, and that morning itself, the mainframe server of my legal firm was hacked. 20 years of data was all encrypted. Everything was gone, okay? Overnight, 20 years of data. And that very afternoon in London, I heard from a young London lawyer talk about blockchain for the very first time. So that is why today I am such a believer and uh, uh, advocate, uh, you know, a strong advocate for blockchain technology, for especially real estate and uh, any data for that matter. Okay? Now, and in 2016, I actually published a white paper which talks about title registration uh, using blockchain. But at the time, I need to use a different title, so I put the real estate legal technology. But actually, it's about blockchain. All right? You can actually uh, look for it in SlideShare. As I, I told you, I've been in the real estate uh, industries ecosystem for many, many years. And when I went into technology, I realized that from a, a, a tech person's perspective, they somehow do not understand uh, in depth about our industries, the real estate. So I'm here to provide the, uh, insight, the insights uh, from an insider perspective. Okay. Now, first of all, when we talk about real estate, Real estate technically exists from the beginning of time to the end of time. As long as we have earth, we have real estate. Am I right? Yeah. So, it is one of the most precious things in, uh, on Mother Earth. And usually, how do we identify a property? Address? Yeah, normally we, we will you know, give someone an address. Or the best is a coordinate, right? You give them a coordinate, you look for me in this coordinate. And by the way, you know what coordinate is this? This hotel, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the coordinate here. But, but if you were to give your friend this coordinate now, will your friend be able to find you at level 2 in this room? The answer is no. Because coordinates is only two-dimensional. Right? It's only longitude and latitude. So they will never be able to find you at level 2 they will find the entrance of a hotel intercontinental. Now imagine, imagine uh, for a moment, uh, a property in 1880, right? Uh, 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 a small, a small uh, townhouse like this in 1880. Over a period of 150 years, the usage of the property may have changed from time to time, right? Today, it could be occupied by high-rise buildings, skyscrapers. And high-rise has got many, many levels. So, the ownership also may change over time from this lady to another man, another gentleman, a young man, and so on. Imagine if we had blockchain in 1880. Today, we just need to pinpoint a point on Earth. We will be able to tell what was the history, background, you know, what happened to that point on earth. We will be able to tell. Isn't it wonderful? But we didn't have blockchain in 1880. Right? So we can only look forward. Because with blockchain, with technology, we can now identify, we can positively ID a property using four dimensions. Meaning, we will have longitude, we will have latitude, we can even have the altitude of a point. And time being the fourth dimension. At each at which point in history, this point on earth, what was it? 
You know, who occupied it? Who owns it? What was it being used for? This is the power of blockchain for real estate. Okay? And how blockchain is going to transform the real estate industries? Basically, we are looking at three uh, major, major verticals. Of course, everyone is talking about tokenizing properties. Cut it into small lot size, fractionalize it, token it, and we can buy and sell because assets are generally very illiquid. Uh, prop I mean, property is illiquid assets. Therefore, tokenization makes sense. And you need smart contract to execute the transactions. And of course, uh, title ownership and dealings is something that many, many uh, uh, government in many countries are looking at. Uh, you notice I put ownership and dealings. Eh? Ownership is only a record, but dealings is different. Dealings, you can even have things like a tenancy, leasing, power attorneys, letter authorizations, and so on. What are the dealings between the parties pertaining to the property can be recorded on blockchain. It can be traced and can be tracked. Now, of course, in 2017, everyone jumped onto the bandwagon of ICO. And we see that there's a lot of commercial adoption of blockchain in real estate. Especially when you go to ICO Bench, you just have to type real estate. I found 190, 190 ICOs. How many of these ICOs are still here? Don't know, really don't know. Okay? But these ICOs are what? They are basically startups. Startups with ideas to use blockchain for real estate, you know, to maybe fractionalize some of the thing, tokenize, uh, rental sharing, shared economy, use token, coin, whatever, utility coin. Majorities are utility coin. But those are startup. And uh, I don't know how much they have run fundraiser and how many still exist. But last year, 2018, we really see actual use cases of uh, blockchain from a developer and a builder perspective, I mean, we see real building. Like, for example, the first one, you see Manhattan. This residential building was tokenized. It was valued at 30 million, uh, 30 million US dollar, and it was tokenized and sold to retail investors. And the second one, you can see that it's a student hostel project. Even student hostel project can be tokenized and can be invested by many, many investors. So can this kind of model work in Malaysia? or any part of uh, Asia for the matter? Yes, definitely, right? Okay, and even St. Regis. St. Regis has made a decision to ditch their conventional read. Okay, outgo conventional read, and they are going to now sell by tokenizing it, okay, on blockchain. Even St. Regis is doing it. Okay, why? Because of some of these reasons. Firstly, easy entry. Anyone with even 500 ringgit with 100 ringgit can own a part of a property, right? Easy entry and no bank loan required. I, I do not know about you, but in Malaysia, for the last couple of years, for us to buy a property is very, very difficult for us to get a bank loan approved. So it's a major, major pain. There's a reason uh, home ownership is a, a huge problem in the country, right? And for the property owner, this is a perfect, perfect way for them to unlock some of the equity of the properties because it is not easy to sell in and block basis. So, fractionalizing it, tokenizing it is a good uh, idea. And in Malaysia, we do have real property gain tax. If you tokenize it and you sell, is it, are you selling a property? You are not. Therefore, you are not subject to real property gain tax, which is a good, uh, very good news uh, for many, many property investors, right? Uh, high liquidity, of course. And the world is your market. Usually for developer or property owner, I want to sell my property. It's difficult for me to you know, go to the world to look for a buyer. But now with social media, if I can fractionalize it, anyone in the world can own a piece of my property. Because you are not buying the property, therefore there's no foreigner state consent required. Anyone can own a piece of your property and gain and gain yield from the property. Now, but, okay, uh, I mean, over the years, whenever you see someone on the stage or whenever you meet a blockchain expert or consultant, they always tell you the good news, good news, good news. Why blockchain? Why blockchain is so good? But is it really foolproof yet? The answer is not yet, right? Because blockchain is still not at its mature stage. We are probably at the 30% or 40% mark. 
Okay? So what are some of the problems? Going back to property. Property is all about valuation. It's about the value of the asset. Just because you tokenize a property doesn't create value to the property itself. So you look at a budget hotel. You fractionalize it, you tokenize it. That can you convert it to make it into a sandwiches? You can't. Okay? In fact, a couple of months ago, I heard someone, this lady in Singapore, I mean, she put it very crudely. She says this, I mean, exact, huh? I quote her, she said that, you tokenize a piece of shit, you still get, uh, you get many pieces of shit. <laughs> All right? so, but that's exactly the, the concept. Now, two, the certification and authentication of the real estate on blockchain. I know everyone tell you that, oh, the moment you put a, a property on blockchain, it becomes immutable, we can track uh, transactions, you know, so therefore it is genuine. But in any case, we still have to go back to the genesis, the origin. What, what title do you input to the blockchain? That is the, the main key question. If you put in a fake title information onto the blockchain, all the other transactions, even though are genuine, but the origins is, is not, a, or, uh, not a genuine uh, a transaction to begin with. Why I tell you this? I told you I, I come from the insider uh, uh, perspective, right? Being a real estate lawyer, we see a lot and a lot of land fraud cases in Malaysia. I think some of you are from India. India also, there's a lot, huh? a lot of fraud, land fraud cases. We can have two, uh, two identical original title deed, okay? Original title deed, both are issued from the land office, two identical one, having two owners with the same IC, uh, same copy of IC, all right? But one is a genuine owner, genuine uh, owner to this title. The other one is uh, an imposter, all right? And that, because of that case, my firm was dragged into a, a legal suit and we have to go to court and became big witness. So uh, throughout my 19 years of practice, I have been uh, you know, involved in two land fraud cases and I have many, many friends, lawyer's friends, who are dragged into uh, mortgage fraud. People who use you know, multiple land title to borrow from different, different banks and charge the title to the bank. Okay. So, uh, how to deal the... Uh, a title before you put it on blockchain? That is a very, very key question. Okay? Uh, our our uh, land registration uh, department in Malaysia, in three of the states, we are currently digitizing our title and it is taking a painfully long period of time because of that. They need to verify the title first. Okay? Now, two, uh, I think last year, 2018, many, many people are looking at this now. We, we now realize that Blockchain is not an internet, right? Blockchain is still at the moment at the intranet stage. It's still not internet. How many of you are aware of that? You know the difference? What is, what is intranet and what is internet, right? So intranet is like your, your closed system. Internet is an open system. Because chain, from chain to chain, we cannot cross chain. The moment you cannot cross chain, you will not be able to automatically verify information. Even though I know well, we have EOS, we have one chain, I, I think there are four, four different uh, platforms that are trying to do uh, cross-chain. But mind you, when they do cross-chain, they are talking about uh, you know, swapping. Okay? They are talking about uh, exchanging information. But they are, they are still not going to uh, make it into an internet. For example, if I were to put AI into this chain, can this AI be able to detect something happened in the other chain? No. It will not be done automatically, unlike, in, unlike internet. Internet, we can actually you know, uh, dispatch our AI and we can you know, basically scrap you know, every information from the internet. So that is something that we need to be aware of why there's a reason to it, uh, fraud. Okay. Uh, there's actually a lot of uh, blockchain fraud out there. No? I don't know whether are you aware of that or not. Okay. For example, very, very simple. I only look at real estate. You see, if I today I have a piece of land title, okay, original piece of land title, I can register my title and my ownership onto blockchain A with a, 
uh, tokenization project. Okay? And I start to tokenize my, my land and start to sell fractions of my land. Okay? Selling the token and collect money. The same piece of title, can I go to another blockchain, another tokenization project and list it there and give it maybe like slightly different description and I can put any picture because land is land. Land is land fraud is the easiest in the world. Okay? Because every piece of land looks more or less the same. Okay? So I can do that multiple times. Okay? And when I tokenize, what is the possibility and chances of an owner to double sell, to oversell, right? to do multiple sales? What is the chances of that? It is possible. It's totally possible. Right? So we will need to solve the, the technical problem first before tokenization of property can be foolproof. Okay? So uh, that is something that we really, really you know, need to be aware of. And at this moment of time, you know how do we solve this problem? We get a land title, we park it under a trustee. So we tell the trustee, all right, you please hold this title or you register the title uh, to your name. So the moment we, we, we conduct due diligence, we do a land search, we'll see that this title has been uh, transferred to the trustee to be hold as, uh, to be hold on trust for all the tokenized, all the token holder, all right. So the irony now is this. A decentralized system, blockchain, is supposed to solve the trust issues. And now, trust is the, something that we are looking for. Okay? Physical trust is something we look for in the blockchain. Okay? So that's the irony of it. Uh, that is commercial, uh, uh, commercial aspect of it. But coming back to the, the country aspect, okay? the country aspect, how can a country benefit from blockchain for their real estate, for home ownership? Okay, as a country, uh, I don't know about your country. I see like um, uh, you know multinational uh, narratives here, but in Malaysia and, and some of the Asian countries, we these are some of our major major problem. First is of course uh, land fraud, okay, property fraud. That's one case. Then uh, tax leakages, okay, tax leakages. I think Asian country is not the only one. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ger Germany has uh, started to use blockchain to track uh, tax fraud, I think. I think Germany has started to do that. Now, I'm, I'm particularly, I'm referring to property tax. Because why? In Malaysia, most of the uh, property owners who are landlord, who collect rental, a big percentage of them do not declare their rental income to the government. And they do not Sometimes they sign a tenancy agreement, they opt not to stem the tenancy agreement so that government cannot track them and they, you know, you know, they do not declare the rental income. Uh, with, blockchain, with blockchain, if we are able to work with government to link up all the departments, we are talking about of course, inland revenue, land uh, registry department, the state government and so on, uh, with AI input, we will be able to track okay, all this. So the moment you transact, you enter into tenancy, uh, you will be able to see it on blockchain. Right? But of course, this one requires a lot of uh, political view, a lot of work with the government. And finally, distribution of housing. Yesterday, we had the uh, CEO of Mike was here. So when I had a chat with him outside, he was telling me that uh, they are looking at how to use blockchain to help home ownership in Malaysia. Okay. Because, again, these are the, the problems from the ground. Malaysia government is doing a lot of work to encourage home ownership and they are supplying a lot of affordable homes to the people in, in Malaysia. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Malaysia systems is not a centralised system. It is a decentralised system that gives problems because every state government maintains their own system and they do not share their data with other states. So therefore, we, see, we do see that, uh, we do see young people who has got money, they can buy multiple affordable homes in multiple states without the states knowing it. Right? If we can centralise this and put it on blockchain, then we will be able to track real, uh, real uh, first-time homeowner, uh, you know, people who really need an affordable home, then we allocate and distribute to them. Okay. Some of the countries are going into that already, especially, I think, uh, South Africa. 
Kenya and some of this country. Now, of course, land title is uh, something that we should start with. Why? Because, remember the problem I was telling you, even though we have a lot of good uh, tokenization platform in the world, we can tokenize property. If they cannot, if their blockchain cannot link with the local government land office blockchain, there's no way you will be able to verify. So this is a, a Dubai land office. Dubai is actually now uh, linking all the departments. This is how the UI looks like. I think time is up. Okay, right. So finally, the solution is what? Blockchain alone will not be able to solve this. We need AI data, data analytics, link it with everybody so we can, uh, nobody can run away. Lah. Okay, we can check everyone. Uh, this is Kenya using blockchain for affordable housing. Uh, yes, so finally, what I can say is uh, if, we, if blockchain, the, 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 the origin uh, intention of blockchain is to give power back to the people, I think uh, the people should be able to, uh, you know, ought to benefit from blockchain by using blockchain to distribute uh, affordable housing and uh, home ownership back to the people. Okay, with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth.